Hey everyone, Shark here with a 1v1 rematch for you today between Ares and Treads, two top 20 players on the map Villa Fiore. Ares will be playing as the Wehrmacht, locking in the breakthrough battle group right away, and Treads playing as the Brits uh, is going to lock in the Aussies. No co-caster on this one, uh, going to try something new in the post-match review, so let me know in the comments what you all think. Uh, as always, links and timestamps in the description below, and with that, we'll roll on to the video. Alright. So we've got Treads down here uh, on the west side of the map at the bottom for right now, playing as the Brits, um, teching up immediately uh, to his tier one and getting some Australians. And I love this already, using the retreat mechanism to get them to his headquarters as soon as possible. Some of you guys might have noticed the Australians come in from off map and it can take them a little bit longer to walk in from wherever they spawn. Um, meanwhile, we've got Ares up here getting the Ketten Crod. Um, he's playing as the Wehrmacht, and he's already unlocked Breakthrough Battle Group uh, in the MP40, so expect him to play with some Grins. Right on cue, the first Grenadier squad on the way out. Sappers capping up uh, to the north side of the map. Aussie's putting down a Sangvar wall here on this uh, munitions point in the center. Now, these guys uh, play each other a couple of times, if I remember correctly. Uh, Treads has won 11 of the 13 games that they played each other. Uh, and the other one, one of his losses being one of the previous casts where Ares won with a single victory point left. So, really looking forward to this one. Um, Treads getting an infantry section out, right? Which makes sense. The Aussies need support from the infantry sections, especially for the anti-vehicle and the utility. Ares prioritizing fuel early. I'm interested to see this matchup, Grenadiers versus Aussies. Both in green cover relatively short range. Sappers are going to come in from the flank and push off the Grenadiers. The Sappers with their high DPS will actually do a lot more damage. And yep, Grenadiers retreat. Second Grenadier squad coming out, and they are going to prevent the Aussies from putting down another Sangvar wall here on this munitions point. Um, Treads catches it early, so he doesn't take too much damage during construction. Sapper is not available to support this time. That's funny that the construction of the wall actually causes issues with where the models sit. And this appears to be a fairly even fight. Now sappers are going to come in, try to force the issue, and the grenadiers pushed off. So I've found personally that uh, Aussie and grenadier early engagements typically uh, go a lot uh, based on RNG. A few section forces off the kit and crowd. Ares trying to get aggressive with it. So it looks like Treads has good central map control. Uh, fuel control right now is pretty even. Ares doing a good job trying to cap around the edges. An MG42, uh, if it doesn't get set up in time, oh uh, yep, and it will, and force the sappers out. And burn down two models of the first burst. Now, Aussies over here trying to stay at range to fight against the Pioneers. It looks like they, the Pioneers are just going to bounce away, uh, focus on the fuel. Now the infantry section of the Grenadiers in the middle, but Ares is bringing up his MG42 to support. <clears throat> Ketten crowd in the rear to provide some vision. The burst comes down and it's going to. Oh! The infantry squad avoids suppression. So good soft retreat there. Forces off the Ketten crowd. You got two more infantry sections out for Treads since I've been talking. Kangaroo is forced off by Grenadiers with the MP40 upgrade. The enemy have taken our oh, that was pretty brutal shot right there. Pioneers. Uh going down here, but the MG-42 is going to suppress the infantry section, and they're forced to retreat as well. More infantry coming up. MG-42 is going to have to relocate again. This is... Huh, that's funny. So, granted, the car 98K is still doing work against the infantry section, even though they are at range. The Brits finally drop one model, and he's sprint to soft retreat them away from that long range engagement. Head and is going to keep pushing on the flank here. Infantry section versus grenadiers on the opposite side of the map. 
and the, the Brits should win this one. Oh, but the MP40 upgrade pops and they're forced to retreat. Good catch by Treads. That happened really fast, and if he wasn't paying attention, he probably would have thought he was going to win that engagement. We're losing men here. Infantry section with the recce upgrade does some damage to the, uh, the Grenadiers there, MP40 Grenadiers. Doesn't know that MG42 is standing here ready to suppress, but doesn't have vision. Sapper's trying to pursue this Kettenkrod. They're going to do a bunch of damage, but they're not going to kill it. Not at this range. Aussie squad back up on the field, full health. Uh, and Treads trying to figure out how to deal with this MG42. As you can see, uh, no windows on the sides of this building. Area is going to get out of Panzer Grenadier squad, so clearly very heavily leaning into the infantry fight. Uh, infantry section of Grenadier sparring in the south. Uh, Treads, it looks like, is also playing heavily into the infantry fight. He's going for a medical upgrade. He's got enough fuel for the next tier. Aussie's trying to flank the machine gun here, and they get just barely get outside the arc. They're going to do a fair amount of damage to this MV-42 before it turns, and it will retreat. Panzer Grenadier is, though, forcing off the infantry section in the center, and the MP-40 Grenadier is going to do a lot of damage to the Aussie, so good wide-ranging engagements here in the center, um, but it looks like Ares is going to, going to win this one. He's also decapping the fuel in the south. Tens are gonna deers plus MP40 uh, grinds. Yeah, and this infantry section is smart to get out of there now. And that crowd just decaps so quickly. It doesn't have the comms cables upgrade. Um, I see a lot of people, a lot fewer people going for that upgrade now. Um, I think it's still useful, it just depends on the circumstance and if you're floating munitions, and Ares has been using a lot of his munis for MP40s. He is laying a mine down here, yeah I think that's a better use of munitions. Sappers versus Pioneers at range, up here in the top, uh, fighting over the plus 16 munis point. Infantry section trying to counter cap in the center. They're in green cover, so they won't get suppressed, but they will take quite a bit of damage. Uh, MG42 also in green cover, but actually drops a model. And so without support, the infantry section could actually win this, this engagement. Oh, Sapper's forced off by Pegrens and MP40s on the side, but that squad will get away. The squad of kangaroos and the infantry section there. Oh! The Panzergrens hit a mine and get suppressed. Infantry section does force off the MG42 in the center. Ari is going for the uh, tier 3 veterancy upgrade, and he gets a second squad of Panzer Grenadiers out. That veterancy upgrade will also apply to any AT guns that he produces. Uh, infantry section hits a mine here, so the Ketten crowd gets veterancy, so now it'll camouflage. A lot going on in this map. Uh, Treads teching for Stuart right now. So I think that's going to be his play, his answer to some of this uh, aggressive infantry play from Ares. And actually, <clears throat> with his infantry, four infantry sections now, two with the recce upgrade, uh, and two without, so he could always upgrade those to boys if he needs them. Uh, so he's got some versatility here, but, but nothing else really. Um, waiting for the ability to, to build a Stuart. He's got a good amount of fuel, so he'll be able to build one right away. He can also tech up to the uh, the two pounder if he needs it, but Ares hasn't really shown his hand other than the Panzer Grenadiers coming out. So he knows there could be a Stummel, there could eventually be a Stug. Um, but that's about it. He hasn't indicated that he's built tier four yet. MG42 and MP40 Grenadier squad are gonna basically try to force treads off from this this capping uh, on the north side of the map. MP, uh, MG42 is gonna move up. The Grens force off the infantry section. So Ares pushing in the center and then pushing in the north, trying to take control. Treads counter pushing, but he's going to get forced off again here by these Grenadiers. Uh, Grenadiers lately, latest patch, they seem very hardy and they do quite a bit of damage. So the, the buffs to them have made them very viable. Um, and with the MP40 upgrade, they can close with the enemy and do a fair amount of damage. Treads demonstrating the best way to fight them right now by kiting them with long-range infantry, uh, and he'll win that engagement. 
Kangaroos move to this building here, protect the VP. Barry's using the crowd to try to cap up. And here comes the steward. Panzer Grenadiers recognize they are not equipped for this. And they immediately bounce. So this is where holding onto a couple of those Grenadier squads is really useful with their Faust and their utility. MG42 is going to try to burn down this Kangaroo squad. The steward's going to come challenge MG42. And I didn't even know you could drive through there. That's super cool. But the steward taking his time focus on MG42 is going to give Ares time to get his uh, his first AT gun out. We got Pack 40 coming. KD right now slightly in Fred's favor. Ares finally upgrading healing. First AT gun comes out. Treads upgrading snares on his infantry. He gets uh, the recce upgrade on a third infantry section. So it doesn't look like he feels the need to develop uh, boys AT rifles, which makes sense. He hasn't seen any light vehicles from Ares. Pack 40 set up that Vet 1 allows it to get camouflage. So I think, you know, if I'm guessing Ares' plan here is probably to try to lure uh, the steward into a spot where it can ambush it. The flare actually reveals the camouflage, so good use of the flare, not just for wrecking, but it reveals camouflage units. Panzer Grenadier is going to focus on infantry section, and the Grenadiers coming up probably to try to snare the steward with the Pack 40 coming up on the side and support. Snare goes off, but not enough to get an ending crit on the steward, so it'll back out of range of the Pack 40. Panzer Grenadier's holding up as well, capture the fuel. But they are going to get forced off by all these great infantry sections. The counter push on the other side of the map. Panzer Grenadiers and Pioneers against Sappers, and the Sappers get forced off. Stewart pushes back against the Grenadiers, but really, Tread's doing a good job. He's right up on Ares' doorstep right now. The Grenadiers doing a lot of damage, uh, but the infantry section is holding up. Oh, a crod goes down. Looks like to a mine on the south side of the map. Stuart here to support. It, this time it will take the engine crit, and I'll have to back up. It does have the tank commander upgrade, so it will repair itself once it's out of combat. Pack 40 coming up, and again, it's camouflaged, supported by the MG42. Um, so now you've got treads capping, again, using the flare. I love that. It's really smart with the new focus on camouflage. He runs the pioneers uh, counter capping the opposite side of the map. VP is relatively even with treads at the slight advantage. Uh, fuel though, treads definitely at an advantage for the moment. KD slight advantage to treads. Infantry second section just finishes their reconnaissance upgrade, but the pgrans close before they can do any real damage, and they're gonna be forced off. But the pgrans gonna get attacked by another infantry section and a third coming up on the flank. Um, if he's not careful, these guys are going to just bleed a bunch of manpower here. But right now, they're just splitting the damage. No models dropping. That's got to be really frustrating. Uh, they're also not doing a lot of damage uh, to the, the Brits over here. Then you got another engagement. Gren's getting beat up on by Stuart and two infantry sections. P. Gren's coming in to support, uh, but this is not the engagement they want. They launch the Faust, and somehow the Grens get away without dropping the model. Bundle Grenade comes out. I thought it was a decent dodge, but it still kills two models from the infantry section. So, good anticipation by Ares with that grenade to make sure the grenade still did some damage. Pack 40 here is in the center, set up to deal with the Stuart. Interested to see if he gets a shot off here. Doesn't see it. There it is. First shot. Oh, does a lot of damage to the steward. Grens are going to go in for a snare. Wisely hits hold fire on the steward to keep the pack forward from getting a follow-up shot. Now, a uh, mortar coming out uh, for treads. Probably to, to deal with the combination of the machine gun and the AT gun. And now these grenadiers are pushing right up in the middle. The Ares makes some good progress in the center, but honestly, Treads has the sides of the map capped up. He's creeping that AT gun up, and now P4 out for Ares. 
Meanwhile, Treads repairing the Stewart. And he has not teched up the tier 4 yet. He has 110 fuel, so he has enough. Uh, but he does not have a tank on the field. He's getting his first AT gun out now. It looks like he's going for the over repair. Prioritize that over the Archer. I like that though, because that if, if that allows your Stewart to take an additional hit, you need that when the Pack 40 has got that camouflage bonus. Although that being your only AT on the field right now is a little rough. <clears throat> this infantry section decaps the center and then retreats. They're gonna drop what models for their their trouble. <clears throat> Ares capping up both flanks of the map. P4 advancing relatively unopposed. The Stewart's gonna go to the flank to try to deal with these Panzer Grenadiers. And the P4 is gonna get right in behind him. And this is potentially dangerous for the Stewart. AT gun hits the field, but it's off for the flank. Oh, first snare comes in on the P4. Sappers are gonna maintain sight. For the crew shock. Oh, Stuart hits the P4, but doesn't do much damage. So Ares is gonna think twice about this, and he's gonna wrap back around. But he is capping up uh, Treads fuel and heavy munitions point. Looking for another snare on this P4. Oh, AT gun hits it in the rear. The P4 is able to get away before the infantry section can snare it. Stuart pushing up pioneers on the flank. So really wide range of engagements here. Fans are gonna do screaming screening for the P4 so that it doesn't get snared again. One squad retreats, so the squad closes. Stuart back in the center with some over repair, so it's got some additional health to spare still. Now with the Breakthrough Commander, you don't get the light vehicle repair, so Ares does need to invest uh, in Pioneers to make sure that his, his vehicle is repaired unless he puts out a bunker. Grenadiers, uh, Panzer Fouls, the Stuart here in the center, but only do the crew shock. Mortar doing some damage here. Oh, now a uh, half-track with Stoss Trooping on the field. Probably a good counter to some of the, the continued use of the uh, infantry by Treads uh, with all the recce package upgrade. Um, he had the manpower, so I understand the thought process there. I wonder late game, especially with the infantry training, uh, if these Grenadiers are going to struggle. And I expect that's why he's going for the Stoss Trooper. Oh, he goes for a Stummel. Which will give him some extra utility, both against vehicles and infantry. Leading with a bundle grenade. Oh, uh, he guessed, but he guessed wrong. So good reaction by Treads. The Panzer Grenadiers are going to burn down this infantry section. Steward in support, but it doesn't want to push too far. It's only at half health. MG42 in the central building getting bombarded. P4 is in base getting repaired, uh, but the Stummel is in support. Uh, they are really focused on this building. Oh, MG42 is going to get away with one model. AT gun in the center is going to have to back off. Saw stripping capture the flank. So Ares on a triple cap right now. He's flipped the VPs to his favor. And I'm, I'm wondering what Treads' plan is here. Another bundle grenade. A good guess, and actually still gets two models. P4 back out on the field with support from the Stummel. This infantry section wisely retreats. They were in real trouble there. AT gun set up to cover their retreat. There's a little bit of damage to the P4. Stewart back out on the field. And good combined arms fight here in the center. Stummel trying to force away the AT gun. Grenadiers backed up. I think they were looking for the snare on the steward. Stoss Trooping advancing now with the AT gun in the rear. And green cover versus no cover, they're going to do very well against this uh, infantry section. A fifth infantry section now out on the field for Treads. 
and he is floating 180 fuel. I wonder if his thought process is to hold out for the archer. He still he has a number of command points, but not enough to unlock it. Yeah, he needs basically seven at this point. The enemy has lost their foothold. And then after all of that, engagement in the center comes to a halt. Good use of the flare to reveal the, the pack 40 camouflage back there. And with the mortar, you can start doing preparatory bombardments. I would not be surprised if a couple snares come out. But the P4 backs up. Stoss trooping and grenadiers helping to counter. Oh, red phosphorus grenade. That'll do some damage on retreat for this infantry section if it crosses through it, and it will. Recky already coming in. The MG40, yep, MG42 forced to back out. Infantry second section's coming in, supported by the AT gun, and they'll chip away at the P4. On the flank here, Stuart infantry section attempting to hold off this push uh, by Ares Panzer and Beers. Wrens are going to sprint to try to snare the steward. Stummel is following, following up as well. Uh, they won't get close enough. Ares trying to put a lot of pressure on this fuel. I know, I feel like he's worried about uh, heavy tanks coming out for the Brits. White Phosphorus round on the steward to blind it and force it off. Panzer Grenadier is fighting in infantry section. They're going to throw a bundle grenade. Oh, and they dodge it exactly. Now here, so the number of windows, so there are three windows, pins are going to be yours, uh, can obviously fire into the building, and now they're going to breach, and the infantry uh, section will leave. He treads counters through the center, he caps up the muni point, but it's going to get forced off by the MG42 with the infantry. P4 healed in headquarters. Panzer Grenadier is getting beat up now by the Stuart and the Sappers. You gotta really worry about the building getting knocked down at this point. If he's not careful. Oh, one more shot and this building is gonna go down. And Ares doesn't see it. Oh, and one of his P-Grand squads gets annihilated by a collapsing building. That's, that's frustrating. P4 into counter the Stuart. If it drives hard on this, this could be bad for the Stuart. There is an AT gun in support, and it will get a shot off and a stun shot onto the P4. So engagement's going to basically be uh, a draw. On the opposite side of the field, a Brum Bear out now. So you can tell Ares is worried about all the infantry on the field. The Stummel and the Brum Bear, uh, good AOE level attacks. It right, forces off the infantry section there. And then obviously with the breakthrough battle group, you got to wonder if the Tigers are coming. Treads has enough to unlock uh, the Archer Tank Destroyer now in terms of command points. Um, which I... Because he still hasn't teched up to Tier 4, so I honestly expect him uh, to use that. Six infantry sections, so he's really, really invested. Um, and his Aussies must have gone down at some point, because they are obviously not on the field anymore. Good use of all the recce sections and the mortars. MG42 gets cleared. The Gren's gonna try to go pick it up and they will. So Ares is countering the infantry with armored vehicles. And Treads responding with even more infantry. Now he's unlocked the archer, so I expect that to come next. Ares making a, a solid push up here through the center. He caps the center VP, he'll be able to put more of that VP, VP pressure on. And he's done a good job pushing on Treads fuel, but Treads does have plenty of fuel in the, in the bank. And here's the first archer on the field. He's got enough for a second uh, right off the bat. Oh, Stummel takes it from the AT gun. He backs up, but not fast enough. The AT gun will get a second hit off. Oh, Archer starts hitting the Brum Bear, and it needs to back up. And this is where all those recce sections are really helpful. Uh, because they can maintain vision. But the Archer gets one more shot, but it won't. Instead, it'll focus on the P4. P4 is going for the flank. He's using the Blitzkrieg ability. Oh, it looks like he's going to try to sacrifice P4 to 
to kill the archer. So a trade there. Drumbear backs all the way up for repairs. So good showing from the archer. Uh, right off the bat, P4 gone. Uh, Stuart still on the field. Stumul destroyed by the AT gun. Tough engagement for Ares. He's unlocked the tiger, but he is still uh, several resources away. Stuart gonna get snared here, but that's not enough, and it'll heal itself. MG42 recruit contesting the center. This infantry section here. Oh, more grenadiers, so if the Stuart's not careful, we'll get hit with another Panzerfaust. Sappers are in support. Oh man, the Stuart's AoE not doing the damage that he wants to do. But he does force the grenadiers off. Stall troop in an engagement with the infantry section here. And they will win this. You get the grenade cue, but the infantry section retreats before the grenade actually gets launched. Yeah, you can tell. I think that was areas at his uh, central headquarters. He's trying to make sure he can get a tiger out here. I don't know if that's the play, though. I, I think I'd rather have a couple of P4s because you know more archers are coming for Treads. Well, I know because I look at his headquarters and I know that he hasn't built the tier 4 building. So he's going to rely on stewards and archers and then infantry to support. Oh, so that's why he was saving. So, the tiger, I guess only 100, uh, 180 fuel required. The tiger does hit the field. Again, I, I wonder if this is the right play. Because an archer with all these infantry screening for the tiger, uh, I would rather have the mobility of the P4s. Uh, you're not going to face a Matilda. You're not going to face a Churchill. Oh man, MG42 gets annihilated in the center. And it looks like Treads is going to pick that up. Unless the tiger can clear it right away, which it might be able to. Cool. One hit on the Stuart. First couple shots on the Tiger bounce. He's gonna go for a second shot here. Nope, he's gonna focus the AT gun and clears it with one shot. Double that AT gun knocked out. Infantry section trying to swarm it, but the Brum Bear is coming in on the flank with support from the Grens and the Panzer Grenadiers. Looks like the Tiger is gonna focus up and knock out this AT gun, which he does. And a push with the, the Grens and the Brum Bear in the center. Oh man. Yeah, it's boom. Oh, oh my gosh. The tiger just annihilates the mortar. The, even the tube is gone after that shot. And I want. <laughs> it looks like Ares is going to roll right into Tread's base here with a Brum Bear and a Tiger. Attacking the med building. And the Tiger gets his first veterancy. If three sections come up, but then they retreat. And then on the flank, the Brumbear also here. Medic tent destroyed. And this might be enough without... Even if he gets an archer on the field, he needs to screen against these vehicles. The Stuart not able to penetrate even the side armor from the Brumbear. Infantry section here getting attacked by the MP40 Grenadiers. They're going to lose that fight and be forced to retreat. Now here come the snares. Double snare onto the tiger. So, it doesn't have to get health under 50%. If you snare during crew shock, uh, you will get the engine crit. Trip vet Stewart fighting the pack 40. He's got to be really careful with these grenadiers. Um, he'll get away from one, but not the other. Oh, but they don't get the snare off. And it looks like the Stewart might escape here. And then the pack 40 is going to get knocked down by the infantry section. The Stuart makes it away. Tiger now slowly backing out, supported by the Brum Bear. Now Archer back on the field for Treads. It hits the Brum Bear. Oh, the Brum Bear is not going to be able to deal with this Archer. And so if Treads can keep eyes on the Brum Bear. Man, that's 17 pounder. That hits so hard. I love it. Pack 40 recruited to face. Uh, Tiger's still creeping back with the engine crit. 
I love the aggressiveness in the play of going for the base, and I like Tread's reaction, right? To wait to throw the snares until he has two squads in position so we can get the engine crit on the tiger. It's obviously the tiger's biggest weakness. Area's responding by getting a second pioneer squad out to make sure he can repair his vehicles. And they've got Tread's kind of pushing across the map. He's able to secure, thanks to this MG42, one of the VPs. And now he's pushing back up to the center, using the archer to support against these heavy vehicles. Oh, a double hit on this infantry section, therefore it's a retreat right away. And pack 40 is around, uh, but too far back. There you go, good use of the flare. A P4 out on the field now. That mortar doing damage to the pioneers trying to repair. Man, the range on the archer. Gotta love it. Archer gets vet one, and it's still looking for targets up here. Now, I would be worried without the infantry here. Yep, and the archer's gonna back up. The tread's down to 100 points. He's gotta worry about VPs, but he finally has, with that archer, he's got the combat power to deal with some of this armor. But he's gotta keep his forces together, and he's gotta get on the VPs. He's also got the over repair ability, which if I'm him, I'm going to prioritize that on the archer just to give it that extra shots worth of health. Tiger and Brumbear back in the base for Ares. This is when like mobile repairs or four repairs in court be really helpful. He doesn't need it. He's got the VP advantage and he's got the soft strip and challenging on the side. Again, what he doesn't know is that Trez has enough fuel to get another archer out right now. Stewart doing damage to the rear armor with P4. Oh, and the archer gets a hit off. One more shot and this people can be done. Oh, but it whiffs. Well, treads line up on the retreat of these Stoss trooping. Archer forced off by uh, the Grenadiers. Stoss trooping do retreat. It looks like they're going to be okay. Granted, the ears still hunting for the steward, but it retreats back into the arc of the M uh, MG42, and it's going to be okay. P4 and Dire Needle repairs. Tiger is almost back at full health. Brumbear is back on the field. And Trez is going to get his second VP, assuming the Brumbear doesn't annihilate. Oh, nope, so we're going to stay even here for a minute. God, this is so much infantry, and you can see how spread out they are. Trez doing a great job microwing six different infantry sections uh and he's kept his steward alive to vet three archer and support so really really impressive micro here the brits clear the pack 40. um it looks like they're gonna go for the double snare again oh my god double snare onto the tiger so another engine crit infantry sections barely get out of there um using the flare and the recce section to spot for the archer And the frontal penetration of the 17 pounder on the tiger, like, it is the, the true hard counter. God, that tiger's 88 does so much damage to infantry. And so they're able to use it to recover the pack 40. He's going to try to back it out. He's got to hear the Brumbear on his flank. Oh, pack 40 gets cleared by the Grenadiers. This is where the archer is in trouble. Is the P4 Brumbear pushing together? Oh my goodness, those sappers get annihilated. P4. Oh, good use of the steward here to stun the P4. Who's gonna shoot next? Oh man. Tiger shows up. P4 kills the archer. MG42 gets cleared. Tiger against the steward. One more shot, and the steward will go down. No second archer for Treads. Brumbear on the flank. Oh, but don't sit still. Don't sit still. Oh, and the Stuart goes down to the Brumbear. Meanwhile, infantry brawl in the center here. Infantry sections are forced off by the, the Axis infantry, all the close range Axis infantry. And here comes your double vet Tiger. Double vet Brumbear. And it's back on the push. Ares has two of the VPs now. And Tread's getting another archer out. Oh, 
Tiger gets crew shot, but there isn't a squad around for a second snare. Oh, this Brumbear is in a bad spot. And this Brumbear could go down to the Archer. Probably two more shots here. One more, one more shot and that Brumbear is gone. And there it goes. So one thing I noticed Tread's doing is telling the Archer to stop before it shoots so it gets an accuracy bonus. Really, really smart and really necessary at long range. Archer moving up on the Tiger, and this is the duel that we all want, right? Archer shouldn't be able to stand up one-on-one, -on -one, but it will chunk down the Tiger quite a bit. Panzerfaust comes in, through shock. Another Panzerfaust, uh, another Grin Squad sprinting up. Second Panzerfaust. Now the Archer has engine crit, and now the Tiger knows he can pursue safely. At this point, Ares is on the triple cap. And that is going to be game here. Oh my goodness. Hey everyone, uh, we're back. So as always, I'm going to start kind of with a review of the build order. So Treads, uh, as the Brits, playing as the Australian Defense Battle Group, which he locked in right away. Uh, so he starts with his Sapper. He gets an Aussie Light Infantry out. And then he gets the first four of his six infantry sections on the field. Um, he goes with a Stuart, gets his fifth section, then a mortar and an AT gun, his last infantry section. And then he ends up building three Archer tank destroyers, never has uh, more than one on the field at a time. So really leaning on uh, the, uh, the over repair, the Archer, and the one squad of Aussie Light Infantry from that battle group. Uh, and then for Ares, playing as a Wehrmacht, again, locks in Breakthrough Battle Group right away. Uh, he gets his Pioneer, gets his Kettenkrod out. A couple of Grenadiers, both of which end up with the MP40 upgrade. Then an MG42, a couple of Panzer Grenadiers. Then you start to see the balance in the build. So the Pack 40 the first P4, the Stoss Troopin with the half-track that he converts to a Stummel, then a Brumbear, and then he gets a Tiger, and then at the end of the game, he gets his second P4 there. Um, so... Interesting take on the Australian Defense Battle Group uh, with Treads. Uh, he doesn't really lean on the Australian Light Infantry as much as you might think. Instead, he goes with six infantry sections uh, with the recce package. And notable, he doesn't build Tier 4. Uh, he really leans on the Stuart to bridge into the Archers uh, for kind of the end game there. So, uh, in a change of format, normally I'd have someone who's co-casting with me. I didn't have that this time, but what I do have... Uh, to help answer some of this, some of the questions that we had watching the match is my boy Ares. Uh, this is his second match against Treads on, on this channel. The first one he won with a single VP. This one uh, brings it in with a little bit more room to spare. Ares, how you doing, man? Good, how about you, man? Uh, dude, life is good. This is an awesome game. This is pretty pretty epic. And I got to hear that. Yeah, got a lot of good uh, micro stuff, things that like I learned just watching it. I can't wait to share with people. Uh, but I did have a couple of questions for you. Um, because both of you played so well and this game could have gone either way. So since I got you here, I'll just ask you a couple of things, almost interview style. Um, okay. the, the first thing I got for you is immediately you see the Australian light infantry hit the field. Um, you'd already locked in breakthrough battle group, but like, how does that change your approach? What do you, what do you think when you see kangaroos? When I see kangaroos, um, ultimately, how is it going to affect my late game? Right. Kangaroos are just very infantry. They, they really are. They have the ability to essentially 1v1 a straw squad, especially now with their uh, post-patch buff. They're a lot scarier. Um, on that map specifically, I wasn't that worried because it was a CQB map. I chose a CQB doctrine and I was going to go the CQB route with the Panzer Grenadiers as well. So, you know, my main key of thought was I have to put the pressure. I can't let him put the pressure on me because if he closes me into my base or any sorts of like that, and it was a lot of back and forth at first. Um, but you know, I'm going to struggle. And I think you can see that a few times he gets aggressive, pushes me back, mm -hmm. uh, to the point that, you know, it, it took me longer to break out of those situations just for the mere fact I couldn't really bridge that gap right away. Uh, I did find it interesting though, that he only made one kangaroo squad. Yeah. I thought it was, I thought that was interesting too. And it, it's not like he had infantry seconds with boys, AT rifles, right? Like if you're playing DAC and you want to use kangaroos, you have to balance them with some sort of AT um, that wasn't the case. So I said all six yeah. of his sections ended up with a recce package, which was really useful. He was using the flare quite a bit to see ahead um, to deal with your your camouflage pack forty. 
But yeah, I thought that was interesting. And I actually don't, I don't remember when the Aussie squad went down, uh, but they didn't make it into the late game. So I don't think you ever really had to deal with them in that capacity. No, and I, I didn't. And uh, if I recall right, he never actually put the uh, scoped rifles on the Aussies as well. I don't think he did. So, like, yeah. They weren't fighting at peak performance. Um, funny enough, I, I think that was kind of his mistake there was going full recce or not going enough Aussie. I think he would have performed a lot better, especially with six infantry squads. Uh, he obviously outnumbered me. Um, had he gone, say, you know, double uh, double uh, infantry section with Brens on him, and then he had also gone, build that out with the uh, Aussies as well. I think it would have scaled a lot better just for the mere fact you get that vet ability that can snipe off infantry units. Yeah, and because it's not like you had a bunch of light vehicles out. Right, you didn't go mechanized, no. you didn't go eight rod, you didn't get the half track until after you had a P4 on the field. Um, <laughs> so he didn't need, you know, he didn't need the AT. We'll talk about the snares here in a little bit. Um, but I thought that was interesting. And it's actually one of the, like, I like that he used the features of the Aussie build without, like, relying on it totally. Um, yeah. I see some people do that with coastals every now and then. Like, they go that battle group, they get a single squad, they use it to build bunkers, but they don't use it as a, they otherwise fight Wehrmacht as, as you would fight Wehrmacht. Um, and I think that's interesting. It makes a lot of sense to me. Um, the, the next thing, and I, I talk about this in the cast, right? So your first P4 goes down in a trade with the archer. Uh, and I can tell you're saving for the tiger mainly cause I get the audio cue that you stopped reinforcing at the headquarters. Right. And I'm like, Oh, okay. He's saving up. <laughs> um, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking now I, I have obviously perfect vision, and I know that he doesn't have tier four out. So he's got a steward and I can tell he's unlocked the, the archer, right? He got one on the field. Like, okay, so he's going to rely on archer for late game. So in my mind, I'm thinking two P4s might be better uh, than the tiger because of their mobility. Uh, but can you talk through the thought process there going with the tiger? Okay, right, so I had the first P4. Obviously, um, I sacrificed it to kill the archer. That's not something I want on the field. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you noticed in the cast, I activated Blitzkrieg plus its vet ability at the same time to really amp up that reload, mm -hmm. uh, just on the mere fact is it was getting so low. And then I got the Brumbar, and then it was the Tiger, and then the uh, second P4. I mm -hmm. opted to get the Tiger instead of the P4s for the main reason the Tiger can essentially two-shot the Archer, right? Especially okay. with Blitzkrieg, it can square up with two Archers, say, you know, there's no HE guns around, there's no snares around. But my biggest concern was I could go to P4s, and even with Blitzkrieg, you know, say I could rush the archers. Uh, they don't have the health pool to necessarily tank, especially if he gets multiple archers up mm -hmm. to actually give me the utility that I need to fight on the front line, right? I would have to essentially push in with the infantry and then move the P4s in, which he would just retreat the archers into base. Yeah. The tiger can sit there and it can be squishy for a bit, especially combined with the Brumbar. The Brumbar, I can use it as a meat shield for the yeah. tiger. Yeah. Um, so that's a big reason I didn't do that. Uh, you know, going back to that, it's like I could rush this, I'm going to get snared, and then these things are going to get one or two shot. Versus the tiger, I can sit there and I can eat, you know, four or five shots before the thing's going to go down. So just the ability to micro it and keep it alive versus the Panzer IV, to me, was, uh, you know, I mean, higher reward to a lower risk, right? Versus you could have played it safe, saved a little bit of eco going the P4s. But yeah. I don't think would have given me the field presence I needed. And on top of that, the tiger is just a menace when it comes to AOE dealing with infantry or anything else around it. Yeah, which, we saw you know, that. You can see that in the yeah. game. It was just munching him alive. Yeah, I think his his six pounder like looked at the tiger the wrong way and immediately just got <laughs> <laughs> annihilated. Um, Han said no. <laughs> yeah, no, and, and so I think you're right because I, I wasn't thinking about it from oh if he gets two archers out, which. In my mind, like that's what he needed. He needed to not have the single archer at a time. Two archers Absolutely. with all that infantry and support um, do a lot of damage. Because what I noticed is that the archers, the 17 powder doesn't bounce even on the tiger's frontal armor. It nope. penetrates every time. Mm -hmm. So two of those, yeah, it chunks down the tiger faster than you'd want. But two of those against a P4, like it's going to eat two of those shots and it is running away. And now you've got to repair it um, and you're getting no utility out of it. Um, yeah, and then, you know, if an HE gun were to hit it or a snare, it's just dead in the water. It's not getting out. Yeah. Um, any other thoughts when you saw the archer hit the field? Is there anything else that went through your mind? Like, okay, so he doesn't have creeping barrage or anything like that. Like, what does that, that change in your thought process? 
Honestly, again, my thought process was just keeping that pressure. I did not want, especially on that map, just because of how it leans out and you have that really cancerous hill in mm-hmm. the center. Mm-hmm. To me, it's a poor game design. They obviously went with it, but it makes it really difficult to deal with things, um, especially late game, and you can get those long-range AT guns out, whether it be the emplacements or the archers. I didn't want to get base trapped into my base. So, you yeah. know, that's why the first P4, it was just thrown in there to kill the archer. Because I did have the tiger coming out. I did have the Brombar. I wanted my tanks free. I knew he was lacking AT. Uh, and then the second one, too, you can notice I kept so much pressure on his base to try to keep him locked into that base. I didn't want that archer roaming, and I didn't want a second one up as well. Yeah. Just on the mere fact, if the archers start to get up and he was to parry AT gun with that, um, I would have to essentially get basically a third p4 up send those into suicide it to keep that tiger alive because those things are just too deadly and yeah. most likely with snares combined with the uh panzer fours as well if he snares those archers are probably going to kill him um especially if he have his, his he has his infantry ahead and he's playing it smart right yeah um and then there was a pesky stewart too <laughs> that that thing could have been alive to go you know tread shot it and then just disable the tank completely if it was close enough so it was just it was just a game of pressure, especially on that map. And with the doctrine I chose, and then the route he went, you know, he didn't have the LMGs or anything to like chase off the infantry fast enough. Mm-hmm. I was able to do that. I was able to keep that pressure. Yeah, I mean, really lucky. I think a little bit of like lack of attention. Treads backed up the Stewart, went off somewhere else to micro. Uh, and the Brumbear gets the final shot on it, uh, and finally, <laughs> finally solves that problem for you. Um, I do think that the Brumbear is a good choice because you end up with six infantry squads on the field or infantry sections. With the Brumbear, you end up bleeding them down enough. Uh, the archer is, I think, 400 manpower. Um, yeah. And so even though you like you want two of them to deal with the kind of heavy armor, he was constantly reinforcing his infantry sections. And so I don't think it was really feasible with, with him trying to also maintain field presence and Obviously, you won on VPs, right? So field presence was a problem he he was dealing with anyway. Oh, uh, especially, um, especially when I uh, took the Brumbar Brumbar in his uh, base as well. <laughs> yeah, that created a lot of problems for him, and he did lose a lot of infantry from it. Yeah. Um, so some other things I want to highlight uh, for people watching, uh, and and you know, feel free to jump in here. So uh, a couple really good uh, instances or, or examples of like really solid high level micro. So the first is the use of the hold fire command and you saw treads do this with the steward a couple of times your pack 40 opened up steward gets chunked down needs to back out he puts it on hold fire uh, because the pack's range exceeds what it can see right but if it's if the steward's in the fog of war and exposes itself by shooting the pack can then shoot to its full range right so by putting on a hold fire to back it out he's basically making sure the pack doesn't get that one last cheeky shot off uh, that ends the steward which is how he got it to vet three and had it last 35 minutes into the game um uh, the next thing, stopping the vehicle to shoot. I think this is something that like uh, I should use a lot more with like Hellcats, uh, but for the archer, even for an archer which is already relatively accurate, has high penetration at range, um, this is how he killed your Brumbear. So uh, the archer, because it's a tank destroyer, you can actually see the dudes loading the round at the top, so you know when they're getting ready to shoot, and he would, I imagine he's tapping the W key to stop the vehicle with the uh the changes to the vehicle movement the acceleration is almost instantaneous so you tell it to stop the vehicle slams to a halt and now it's shooting at full accuracy yeah. um and so that you know he didn't he didn't whiff at all at range i think there was one shot the archer missed on the north side of the map um yeah i think it was on a p it was aiming for a p4 that was it would have killed it but it was at range and the archer was moving it missed um so he was able to stop and shoot and that's something that like i know i need to take take forward um one thing i thought was really cheeky uh the australian call-in because they're an off map they run on the field and they're very so they're not like the bursley who come on sprinting um so he threw a he hit a retreat as soon as he called him in and that makes him sprint to his base and then he can send him out so um if you're using the australian light infantry in the future not not you aries i'm sure you know this already but for everyone else who's watching um when you call him in look to retreat him to get to your headquarters and then push him out if they take a while to get on the field uh we talked about this a little bit but the double snare so a good example is the tiger the uh the at snare the infantry sections have that's not going to chunk down a tiger enough to get it below the 50 percent health uh cut off for the engine critical but if a snare goes off when it's already got the crew shocked basically if you snare it twice uh, in quick succession 
then you get the engine critical. So your tiger was at like three quarters health when you were base locking him, uh, but yeah. he got that engine crit and you had to back it all the way up, uh, which is something I think people should try to do more often. I was impressed that he had the presence of mind, like with the brum bear in his in his base, uh, jacking him up to arrange for that double snare on the tiger. So that was pretty sharp. He was he was everywhere with his <laughs> infantry squads. <laughs> yeah, man. When you got six of them, right? Um, yeah. And then the last thing, uh, and you do this really, really well, like your last game against Treads, this, this won you the game, right? You know your battle group abilities and your unit abilities, and you use them constantly to really great effect. Um, and just watching, that's something that I think separates like top 25, top 50 level players from like top 100, top 200 level guys. Everyone's got good micro, but knowing when to use those abilities uh, and what they do and having that kind of like uh, you're not thinking about it you're just reacting so um, in the previous game it was the assault operation to get the quick decap with the commandos uh, and this one was a lot of the use of the, the blitzkrieg the sprint the tactical assault um, the white phosphorus round on the stumble knowing all of that um, you know just like any other game like you have to know the mechanics to to play well so I just wanted to commend you for that I've noticed you do that really really well um, Trez was doing the same um, and so something that I think people should look at going forward, like, hey, if I want to play with this battle group, what abilities am I unlocking and how can they accentuate my, my play style? Yeah, exactly. You know, it's it's all about synergy, right? So um, just a, like an example earlier, how we already mentioned, when I rushed the P4, I activated Blitzkrieg and its vet ability, both stack reloads. I, I think one of them is like 40% or something like that. And then the other one's like 50 Right, so you almost have a hundred percent reload rate, and the P3 already has a uh, what is it, a three or four second reload? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, sounds about right. So now you're down to like a second and a half, which is super powerful. And if you do that with everything, combining that with your battle group consistently, and using you know your infantry in conjunction with your vehicles, and you're just synergizing everything through their abilities, it you can really overwhelm uh, a fight that you are actually losing yeah. in just a few clicks. Um, and then to really like take yourself to that next level too, and this was a big learning curve for me when I was learning, is using your abilities while using your tactical map, right? Kind of getting a feel for what's going on. So, you know, say you're fighting over here because tack map is everything in a 1v1 and you're consistently in and out of it. Uh, if you've watched my streams, you'll notice I play in the tack map more than I actually play out of the tack map. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And um, when you get to that point where you can do that, then you start getting to the point where you can, again, synergize your abilities. So you're using a P-Grand squad. You can tell them to sprint, not looking at them, just looking at them on the attack map. You can tell them to sprint over to that infantry squad and throw a grenade on them. Mm -hmm. You might not be 100% accurate when you're doing it, but it's enough to deter that fight while you're dealing with the main fight, per se. Yeah. And even against higher level players, it catches them off guard a lot of the time, too. Um, I know the biggest problem, though, playing with attack map is, is you can fall for uh, false grenades a lot, and it's bitten a lot of the top players in the butt doing that. Uh, really good players, what they'll do. Um, Dexon has done this a few times, and then uh, Zulu's caught me a few times with it. I've done it to them as well. Um, is... And, and Dumai. Dumai is really, really good at this. Is they'll <laughs> throw grenades away from your infantry because, you know, they know you're fighting on the attack map. You know they're fighting on the attack map. And when you retreat or you're going to move it, you're actually walking into that grenade, mm -hmm. uh, which forces you back. Um, yeah. And very rarely do you actually throw the grenade right, right where people are. Someone told me when I was first learning is good players don't let you get kills with grenades, right? And yeah. it's true. That's why you have to throw it in a place where they're not going to think it's going to be and they're going to move to that spot. No, that, that's a really, that's a good point. So um, I think it's something like, because you play a lot of the same people over and over again in 1v1s, yes. right? Um, so you start to see how they react, right? Uh, and it's something you can kind of read in game with the other player. Like if you're, when you're playing at like my level, a lot of guys will just retreat. They hear the grenade and they get caught out of balance and they'll retreat. Um, and if they're not paying attention, if you throw the grenade instead of on the squad on their retreat path, you can get a couple of cheeky kills. Yeah. Um, but a lot of guys will do other things, whether they're in the fight or not. They'll either move laterally along cover or they'll actually advance into you. But like figuring out what that player's kind of default action is and then anticipating that with a grenade, um, that's one way to try to get grenade kills. The other way is obviously like 
throw three grenades across the map at the same time and <laughs> see if you can catch <laughs> them out um and and even then the players at at your level are still uh dealing with that problem so um yeah really really impressive i would love i gotta watch how you use attack map more because that's something that i i struggle with um i i tend to rely on the mini map for a lot of that stuff so um yeah one of these days i'll just i'll just have you coach me and i'll cast it and everyone in the chat can make fun of me <laughs> hey well aries i really appreciate it um really glad we got the replay to work i know with all the hot fixes it's been it's been super fun thanks for coming on and, and chatting with me about it um i do appreciate yeah, of course. it thank you cool dude well uh thanks everyone for watching and i will see you on the next one